what's good y'all welcome to my review for this week's episode of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind. This episode was actually fucking crazy man. We have like, oh shit, are they gonna do it? And they do this, and then he's like, ha ha, I saw it coming, you fool, you have just made my life easier. No, this was all part of my plan, no, it was all part of my, like, it was bad, the back and forth was fucking ridiculous, man. Also guys, if I sound a little off, your boy is sick. Like legit. Last night I was like, I don't know, like legit. It was quite interesting. So last night I go in there, I'm about to start trying to have, I have my dinner, eggs and beans, you know, I eat some, and then I go to the bathroom, which, you know, of course, beans, you know, you gotta go to the bathroom. Then literally I just started having diarrhea, I was like running back to the bathroom back and forth, like almost every fucking five minutes, which made it almost damn near impossible for me to watch Toonami yesterday, and then legit, later on that same night, I'm about to go to bed, bam, I start throwing up, throw up my lungs, throw up my guts, and, you know, Go to sleep, I've had some Pepto-Bismol, I feel a little bit better, but holy fuck do I still feel like shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, so I sound a lot, that's why the show must go on, and hopefully you guys can get, I can get at least 50% of me out of this. <laughs> anyway, enough of my bitching and moaning, let's just jump right into this vi review. So we start this episode off where we left with last week with Jordan with careening the car off of the, off the road and into the ocean, or the lake or the lagoon or whatever the fuck it was. So in the way, water, Chorno punches the shit out of out of white ice, out of the car, and tells and tells Misa to get the fuck out there and go swim uh swim over there to the to the, uh, to the statue. You know. He tries to he enjoy something like, you know, if our, if you get the disc, you know, we'll be victorious. Get the damn disc. That's what all matters, get the damn disc. And then Misa tells him the true victory will be you with us be killing the bastard and getting the disc, but whatever. Misa goes out of the way, breaks the window in the front of the car, and you'll crawls out of there about to start swimming. Of course, Cool Eyes catches, White Eyes catches up to them, freezes around it, and you know they're kind of just stuck there, frozen. And you know, and he tells, and, and Jordan, and he also like loses like the front skin of his palm of his hand. It looked like I don't know. There was some blood got on some of his. T <laughs> Excuse me. Oh man, hopefully I don't throw up again. <laughs> anyway, so like the palm of his hand, like the skin from the palm of his hand got uh, cut off because it got stuck. So he lost that, and he tells Jordan to, you know, use the, the car, or the hood of the car, or the, the, the engine to use that and to make them vines, to get across her, because it's not completely frozen. Jordan does that, of course, he, of course, uh, um, Hiajo notices this, he's like, Who said it? I can't let you do that! And he punches the car, freezing it instantly, and getting rid of the grass, or getting rid of the vines. Jordan comments that there's nothing that can really stop the car, or that could, you know, grow with a sub-zero temperature other than tundra, other than tundra grass. Misa, this gives Misa an idea, is like, who said about you know, using them, using the vines to get across? He tells him to make more grass, make more grass, make more grass. And then we see that the motherfucker may turn the grass into a fucking skate, uh, snowboard, I'm about to say skateboard, which I guess kind of was, but I didn't have the wheels, so. He legit makes it a snowboard and starts snowboarding across like this path of ice, leading right to where the statue is. So Misa's, so Misa's like riding, snowboarding over there, like an absolute buzz, this was actually pretty cool. But, of course, he's like saying, like, who said you could get, who said you could use a snowboard and like how like to get there? So, of course, he actually then unfreezes everything, and we're showing so, of course, he falls down to the water, and he gets back back up. Then you got White Eyes coming in there, charging towards him, he goes on about, and then, uh, Hyaljo goes on about his stand, and like, that is, that his stand is the paragon of perfection, Ice is like the, is like the, it's the thing of stasis, or whatever the hell he said, I didn't really catch it. But either way, the man just is just, just praising and boasting about how powerful stand, that you cannot defeat my stand, it is unbeatable, you know, this that thing. So afterwards, Misa, so then Misa, fire, and then, uh, Jorno tells Misa to fire off at the Tundra Leaves. He fires off at them, and which turns them right back into the car parts, because we know Jorno can transform stuff, but once it's done, it turns back to its original form. So that's exactly what we did here. So he fires them off, and next to this piece of, like, like a screw or whatever, lands in his, lands, like, right square on the top, right square, right between his eyes. And the Misa's like, well, now it's right there, we can just use it to fire back. Put some more, put like six more bullets into the chamber, and then just start firing at it, and then it gets deeper and deeper into a skull till it like pierces it completely, and he falls right back to the water. He's not completely dead because you can hear sea bubbles coming out of the water, so they're not completely out of dodge yet. But, Jorno just tells him, okay, we got, we got, he's down for the count for the minute, Misa go over there, and you'll grab the, uh, and grab the disc. He, he won't fall for this trick again, so go in there and get the goddamn disc. Like, that was pretty much most of the episode was, was George just telling me to get the damn disc. Because, of course, they had to get the damn disc to deliver Trish back to her father. 
which I saw a little bit of him actually as well in the uh, end credits, which we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. So anyway, Misa gets over. So Misa gets over there by the where the by the uh, uh, climbs up to the top where the statue is. Well, not the statue itself, but like the board that went on the floor that where the statue lays. So he gets on top of there. He's thinking about. He goes on about like, oh, you know, that we need to. That I just need a couple seconds. Will he ever come back? Will he come twice as hard? This that, and third on this guy's stand. So what he ends up doing is, so he ends up deciding, you know what, fuck it, let me kill this bastard now and prove why he's not invisible. And instead of getting the fucking statue, which then again, granted, this episode would have then been like six minutes long, to be fair. To be fair, this probably would have maybe been like, what, a half a chapter in the manga? I don't know. But either way, he would have been said, like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna just jump right in, which he does. He just jumps right back into the water. was like, Mista, what the fuck are you doing, man? Get the damn disc! So he gets down there, has his gun ready, and he's, re and he's ready to shoot him. So once he reaches down, he's looking around trying to figure out how the hell this guy breathes. He finds he sees some like little air bubbles coming out of the back of his neck, so he thinks, okay, that's where he breathes. Gets six bull gets uh, sex pistols up and running, ready to fire off, and he gets in the position. The dude sees him and he goes up to get a, a, a gas of air. And then they and then um, what was it like five, I think, said like, oh they can't get in position, he's like covering it. And it seemed like his head was held was up high, meaning it was covering the entry uh, to the to his breathing. So they couldn't get in position. And he's like, tell him, like, you know, stay in position, you, you don't, you're not gonna get any treats anymore. Yada, yada, yada. Once he gets back on up in the air, he, fi they, he fires off against two, fires off, like, two bullets landing and killing two fish. And he's like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you shooting the fish? Was well, this your plan? And then he look, and as he's looking down, the opening is exposed. Fires off a bullet, six bullet, six pistols goes in there and ricochets it over there into his neck. Bam. Then later on, we start hearing like these little like sparks fly around all over him, and he's like, "You fool! It seems you have forgotten about the way I see the abilities. It's uh, I forget exactly. He's saying something about like you know that that brings everything to a halt. Gas has become liquid. Liquid becomes solid. Don't you see the vapor now?" Jordan picks up on this. He's like, "Oh shit! It's a it's a it's a bullet! Get out of the way!" He says, "It's a bullet ricocheting back to him. It hits him right in the shoulder, and you know we're like, oh shit." Uh, Misto gets up, try gets back up to on top of the arrow where the statue is, and he's real like, you know, Matt, I done fucked up. I should've just grabbed this statue from the beginning. Yeah, you think, Mista? You fucking think, bro? <laughs> and anyway, uh, Hima Hiajo's already up there. He's searching some trash cans and shit, looking for it. He's like, where is it? Yeah, I know it was gonna be high, it was gonna be hidden, it was gonna be found in plain sight, but what the hell is it? Looks at the picture, sees the statue, smashes it, and then he finds the disc. Grabs the disc, and he's like, oh shit, what's gonna happen now? Journal goes on about how we have determination, and that we will win, and that we will, uh, defeat you, as he's trying, as he's getting his arm, reattaching his arm. So once we, yes, once he's reattaching his arm, Journal's like, oh shit, what are we gonna do next? Oh wait, we have to determine, he has determination, this, that, and this, it. all about this determination, determination, and bullshit. So what Jordan ends up doing, is once he gets like, his hand, like, mostly reattached, he slams it against the ice, which breaks off the little, like, red parts that are, like, I guess, connecting it, throws it up into the air, blood is spewing out of it from all directions, and... Yeah, Fumagio being like, what the fuck is he doing? You got, and then meets the pit, he's like, you know, this is a way, this this will light the path to the valley, to the valley of darkness, I think he said, was something, but, but he's pretty much just saying, this will help us gain history, victory. So, wait, so then Jorn, or Mista notices that the blood is on top, covers parts of the little, um, of the ice cubes that he has from that attack that ricocheted back from, that ricocheted back to him from the bullets. I forget what it was called, like, Gentle Wind, I think was what it was called. Um... Yeah, there's a, I think that's the name of the attack he used. So anyway, he uses that and gets him back in over there and hits him within the arm and hits him in there again. He's like, oh my god, really? What's going on? Like, you guys don't ever learn. And he's like, did you forget I said that vapor, you know, stops everything? That or that uh, subjectation stop, stop vapor. So then he pretty much just dissolves that ice, that disc, and uses it pretty much as an armor piece to block up the, um, the, um, where the air tank is. Or he breathes, so he doesn't, so he doesn't, so he can't hit him from that direction. Now, one of the other scrimmage there, I think this might have happened before he did the, uh, before Jordan like threw his arm up. We get to see a little bit more of Mista's backstory. What we saw is that Mista, after after it really happened with the Kai, the guy got killed, which is in self-defense, he did get arrested and he pleaded for his self-defense. The court didn't buy it, and he ended up getting 30 years in prison for five gangsters. I think it's a little excessive, but what do I know? 
So he's in prison. The narrator mentions how the beast always finds the goodness and the, the but, excuse me, finds the bright side and everything. But this time, not so much. He this time he was legitimately scared. He's like, "Fuck, I done fucked up, man." And so we see him like with like that prison food, and then a card comes in there telling him, "Hey, man, you're uh, you're uh, you're free to go." Mista then met up with uh, with Vuterati that tries to recruit him. If obviously uh, Mista accepts, and they go to the restaurant that we've seen a couple extra times. And you know they have some food. They're later joined by Fugo, um, Abakio, and um, La Rancha. Met up with them, and they just start eating and shooting shit. So that's we're back to where we are now. So afterwards, after so after he so after, and also we also see the. Um, um, where he fires up, he fires out the lamppost, or the lamppost. Fires out three times, which bends it more and more and more, Levin leaving this, like, little, it's sharp area to help that is going to be in the music later. So after, so after the bullets ricochet back to Mista and hit him, like, six times, the blood, some of the blood actually lands onto, uh, Fuma not, uh, not Fumagio, on, um, Huma yeah, hum uh, yeah, Humagio, excuse me, <laughs> Humagio's visor. And blinding him, so he's like trying to get the blood out of the way. He's like, "Oh my god, what's going on here? I can't see shit." Yada yada yada. So then he starts firing off his uh, his gun more and more, and just trying to get him into the um, into the um, into the spike. So he keeps going out there. You manage to get him like like get tell you like, "Ugh, what's this white? What's this w warm warm liquid running down my neck?" Obviously, it's blood. And then he's and then good jo um, jo <laughs> Mista keeps firing off. Shots and shots and shots, trying to get him deeper and deeper and deeper in the thing. But the shots keep coming ricocheting back back to him. So he keeps as he's firing shots, he's taking his shots back over and over and it's pretty impressive. I gotta give, give, give Mista his props. But then eventually after once he like starts to get him in there a little bit more, he's like and we see some massive huge amounts of blood come out, we're like, Alright, good. Finally, he's been defeated. Wrong again, ladies and gentlemen. For some, this guy just won't die. He says, like, oh, because that blood, I managed to freeze it, which gave me some support, which means, you know, hey, I'm not going to get die from this, at least not this current second. And everyone's like, fuck. And then he says, and he tells me there's one more bullet left, and it ends up landing in Mista's head. But then, almost instantly, the bullet is gone, and then you got Giorno coming in like an absolute fucking boss. Bum 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 dun 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 my be best Jojo to me is Jotaro, but bruh, Mista got the, not Mista, Giorno got the best entrances, my dude. I mean, this man, every time when that theme plays, it's boss time, motherfuckers. Absolutely fucking love it, so. Giorno comes in there, uses Golden Wind to just beat, to just kick the ever-living shit out of him into oblivion, and the spike goes completely through his neck, and he eventually dies. Grabs this, tells me, he's just like, ah, oh, Giorno. Can you mind healing me, fam? I'm dying here. And then, and then Jordan Ramirez is like, yeah, hate the right to you, fam, but I'm not shining diamond. I don't heal shit. I just bring, I just, I just make, I just create new things. So he's going to create new, like, blood vessels and tissues from where he's shot. And so then he's doing it, and then you got Jordan, and then it gets like hard to hear. Where Mies is like, oh, shit, why you got to be so rough with it, man? Come on. I'm dying here. I'm injured. He's like, this I can't do it anyway. You got this, and you're, and you're probably, he also says all about him stripping to get this all done. So, yikes. But then. Then we see fucking La Rancha. We see La Rancha in this cloak, and he's going down there, and he's like, "Okay, I see two of them." And he finds Mista and Jorno, and Jojo be back on that gay shit. How many of y'all remember back in part three where it looked like <laughs> Abaki, not Abaki, it was um, Joseph and Abdal. Looked like they looked like Abdal was blowing him, and they were fucking. <laughs> they remember that scene in part three, man? That was absolutely fucking hilarious. And they do something similar where it looks like Jorno's giving Mista a blowjob, and then you. He's like, oh! Gives my survivor. He's like, don't like me. So he's like, Jordan, calm down, man. Jesus. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Well, Misa's like, uh, not Misa. Uh, Laurentia's like, oh, man, I, I can't see shit. Man, I'm gonna keep looking for him. And then we get the credits. But then after the credits, we go back to the boss. The boss sees a message saying that Rosoto is on the run or that he's on the hunt for him. And he's like, oh, so you're coming to Venezia? Well, bring it on, bitch. I'm sure Lora I'm sure, I'm sure Bucciarati and his guys can take care of you. So, yeah, and that is where the episode ends. Sorry about the short review, guys, but you guys mentioned before, 
I feel like shit. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Hell, leave a like anyway for me getting through this while I'm feeling like absolute death here, man. Come on. <laughs> one like equals one prayer that hopefully will help me get better. Anyway, so overall, I'm going to give this episode a 9.5 out of 10. Guys, this episode is fucking awesome. And yeah, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Flag, at least on this Christian box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.